Today we'll be looking at the damage profiles for some special issue ammunition and trying to break down which targets should be shot by what. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today's video sees us return to the Death Watch for an in-depth look at their special issue ammunition, which is a small squad based tactical choice you make each time you fire the unit. Now there are essentially four types of special issue ammunition, but there's sort of five due to the regular bolter discipline rule. First up we have Kraken and Vengeance rounds. Kraken will give you plus one AP to your shot, though it's caps to have a maximum of AP minus two. And it also adds six inch to the range of most guns or three inch to pistols. This can be quite important for getting your shots in range or getting a little bit of extra range on rapid fire. Vengeance is even more AP, it's AP minus two on top of whatever your gun's profile was, and this one caps out at AP minus three. This one instead decreases your range by six inches or minus three if you're using pistols. This means that it's objectively harder hitting than the Kraken rounds, but it means that you can't fire it on rapid fire quite as often due to its short range. Next up we have the trusty Hellfire round. This is the one that just allows you to wound any non-vehicle, non-titanic target on a 2+, plus, and it wounds on a 6+, plus for other targets. It's a very strong round at the moment, wounding everything on 2s is amazing, and it's the go-to if you're firing at low armoured targets. Next up we have the Dragonfire that gives you plus 1 to hit and when you're targeting an enemy unit that's in cover. Unfortunately this one's incredibly niche, there are a couple of scenarios where it does better than the others, but they're few and far between. And finally, we have the option to fire the bolter without any special issue ammunition, which you'd only ever do to take advantage of the bolter discipline special rule, which is the one where you can still rapid fire the weapon at 24 inch range, provided you either stayed still, or you're a terminator or a bike. Having such a wide variety really means that death watch kill teams are really threatening against the vast majority of infantry targets, and they can even put somewhat of a dent in vehicles if they focus fire. Now there's a few general principles with special issue ammunition, and the first is if you're using any sort of rapid fire weapon with special issue ammo, then it's usually best to select the best option that gets double the shots. Sometimes that might be foregoing special issue ammunition altogether and using standard bolter discipline. Sometimes it might be better to forego the two up wounding of hellfire to get the two shots of a kraken bolt that's just in rapid fire range due to its extended range ability. Presuming all things are equal rapid fire wise, I've made a couple of small tables which could be handy for differentiating one from the other. So there's actually two factors that depend what sort of special issue ammunition you're going to be firing, and that's the defensive profile of the target and what sort of AP your gun has. Now the Death Watch can access anything from AP0, AP-1 or AP-2 guns, and these will actually vary a lot more now thanks to combat doctrines. Typically Storm Bolters not in the Tactical Doctrine, they'll be AP0, or things like Intercessor Auto Bolt Rifles. AP-1 covers quite a lot, things like Intercessor Bolt Rifles, or Storm Bolters or Auto Bolt Rifles that are in the Tactical Doctrine. And AP-2 weapons could be the Stalker Bolt Rifles, or things like Regular Bolt Rifles that are again receiving the benefit of the Tactical Doctrine. In this first table we have the Hellfire and Kraken rounds competing against each other, presuming that we're not in double tap range for the Vengeance rounds, and that they're both getting the same amount of shots. As, as we said before, if the Kraken round was in rapid fire but the Hellfire wasn't, then typically Kraken's going to win out across the vast majority of the board. It would only be worse against high toughness units that have very bad saves. As we can see, in the vast majority of cases, all things being equal, the Hellfire tends to win out against the vast majority of targets. Interestingly enough, they're equal against Guardsmen when the shots are coming out of an AP nothing gun, wounding on twos from the Hellfire weighing up against the extra AP of Kraken. Kraken will do best against things like Sisters of Battle, as they're still wounding on threes, and that extra AP can make a big difference. Interestingly and very relevantly, when you're firing against Space Marines, provided they don't have a 2 plus save for being in cover, then the Hellfire is again better across the board, even when you're firing AP nothing shots. Against 2 plus saves, such as this Terminator here, Kraken will win out when you're firing AP nothing shots, such as Auto Bolt Rifles, but it will still be worse if your gun already has a bit of AP say if the same weapon is in the Tactical Doctrine. If we move over now and say we're very up close and the Vengeance rounds are in effective range, say you're firing a Storm Bolter that's within 9 inch range, or you've got some shots coming out of an Auto Bolt Rifle or something like that, in this scenario if you're firing an AP Nothing weapon then Vengeance is best against most targets. It's only slightly worse against the Orc Boy and against aggressors where the 2 plus to wounds does slightly outweigh the extra AP. When we're firing AP-1 weapons, such as Storm Bolters in the Tactical Doctrine or regular Bolt Rifles, the Vengeance wins out again when you're targeting things like Sisters of Battle with Toughness 3 and a 3 plus save, and things like Terminators with a 2 plus save. The two rounds are pretty much equal against Tactical Marines, 
and Hellfire is better against the guard on these targets. When coming out of an AP2 gun, the Hellfire round just cleans up again, due to going from AP-2 to AP-3 being nowhere near as powerful. It's only against vehicle targets that the Vengeance wins out. So against some targets, particularly those with higher armour, it can be a bit of a tricky decision between the Vengeance or the Hellfire, and in all honesty, if it is quite close, then it's not really the biggest deal in the world if you rob yourself of a tiny bit of efficiency. But if you do want to optimise every single salvo, then it is perfectly possible to do the maths. Overall from those tables, generally against vehicles it's Kraken or Vengeance rounds, and provided you're not target against vehicles, then if you already have an AP-2 gun, or if you're shooting at a toughness 5 or better target, then Hellfire is almost always the best choice. Otherwise it depends how much AP your gun has, and the toughness and armour save of the target. I'll briefly mention the sad state of Dragon Firebolts at the moment, and unfortunately they're very rarely the best pick. The thing is they only add plus one to your hit rolls, which for Space Marines are very good already, so it has a little bit less impact. And if they're targeting a target that's in cover, then it's already going to have plus one to its saving throw, which really makes the Kraken and Vengeance rounds almost always a better choice. It'll also struggle a lot to compete against the Hellfire round as well, as the Hellfire round's always going to be stronger against Toughness 4 targets, presuming though to hit modifiers, and the way the math works out, when you're firing against Toughness 3 targets, the Hellfire and the Dragonfire round are always equal against Toughness 3 targets if there's no other weirdness. One of the few times the Dragonfire actually becomes the best pick is if you're targeting a Toughness 3 target that has a very high invul save, or is going to be saving on its invul save, such as an Eldar Farseer, and it's also minus 1 to hit as well. Only in this slightly unlikely scenario does the Dragonfire round beat out the Hellfire, and it doesn't face competition from the Vengeance or Kraken due to AP not mattering against invuls. Basically, I think that Dragonfire rounds need a bit of a rewrite if they want to make them viable. If it were me, I'd also give them Ignore's cover on top of the plus 1 to hit. Finally, I'll just briefly mention Bolter Discipline as well. Again, it's generally going to be the best pick if it's the difference between firing two shots out of a rapid fire weapon or not doing so. The main exceptions being that if you're firing against a target with a 2 plus save and you're firing an AP0 bolt weapon, such as a standard bolt gun or storm bolter that's not in the tactical doctrine, in that case you will be better served with vengeance rounds provided they're in range. And also if you are targeting something that's toughness 5 plus, then generally a hellfire round will still do you better than firing two shots with your standard bolt gun. So I hope I managed to explain things fairly well there. When you actually get into the nuts and bolts of it, there's really quite a lot of things to consider with special issue ammunition, particularly if you want to make it generalizable to the various different guns that Death Watch can be firing. It's a lot easier to hone in if you just look at, say, storm bolters, and then the maths becomes a bit simpler, although it's still not 100% simple, as their AP can still vary due to the doctrines. In any case, I think in general, special issue ammunition is a really powerful and interesting mechanic. I'm certainly looking forward to putting some Storm Bolters and Bolt Rifles on the table to give it a new go with Combat Doctrine buffs. Thanks very much for listening to another Auspex Tactics video. If you'd like to see more then feel free to subscribe to the channel. We have new 40k videos out every single day. If you've been enjoying the content recently, any support on Patreon is really greatly appreciated. Making these videos does take quite a bit of time, and I have been cutting back on my regular hours at work a bit to try and fit in a bit more recording. This wouldn't be possible without the channel's Patreon supporters, which I'm deeply grateful for, so if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is greatly appreciated to help keep more videos coming. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.